Welcome back to Heart Breathings. We're taking a little bit of a break from our Preptober videos, and I am setting up my October planner. October and spooky season is one of my favorite times of year, and I just thought it would be fun to set up my A5 planner. It's something I haven't done for you guys on this channel in a while, so let me know if you enjoy it. So I have been saving back a few things that I've been purchasing, and it's been also a while since I've used this beautiful cloth and paper crock leather. This is one of the only planners that I had with me during part of my trip last year, so I did use use it for several months, but it's been fun to try out different planners like this sort of Harbor Gray that I used from Kiki K last month. I had it set up in very like earthy tones and greens and browns and things like that. It's a very um, like non-typical color palette for me, but I knew that I would be really going into my favorite color palettes in October. So I wanted to try something new. So of course, when I am setting up a new planner, the first thing that I do is I take apart the previous month's planner. And of course, if you use A5 binder, you can switch out the binder itself. You can switch out any of the dashboards or any of the inserts that you were using. Um, also, I wanted to bring attention to this beautiful uh, stickers that I got from Boulder Bond. She was kind enough to send those to me. So I will link those down below. I've been using those in my EC compact vertical that I've been using as a social media planner. So I can talk about that later. I stopped using my hourly and instead put it here in my A5 binder. But one of the things that I love most about using an A5 binder is just the fact that it's so versatile. You can switch out the binder, the pages, the dashboard, the look and feel completely, which is why I wanted to share with you that look inside my September planner because my October planner is going to be completely different. So if you're somebody who tends to like want to use a planner, but you get bored using the same thing, you might consider going into a binder or happy planner or something that you can customize from month to month. Like I used to love using a bullet journal for that reason, but then I felt the pressure to always like draw things in really nicely. And if I didn't draw my spreads out, I was kind of lost for the month. So A5 has been a really good solution for me. So some of these dashboards I already laminated. Those are from Planner Press. I also bought a few dashboards and some die cuts and things like that from shops on Etsy. So I will have all of those supplies linked below. Those grid pages that you just saw, the task block tracker, those are from my HB90 system. So I'll talk about that in a minute. I also have these beautiful journaling cards from Simply Gilded and a lot of die cuts that I got from the Honey Bee Shop. She had a lot of spooky things. Um, and then these two dashboards are ones that I purchased online from Glam Girl Planners and To Do Papel. And I love them. They're such like higher quality than what I'm able to make for myself at home. And then those uh, vellum or acetate overlays are from, I think, Heather B Designs. I will definitely like I said, if I can't remember something, I'll have all that stuff linked in the description for you. So here I'm just trying to figure out which one I want to use in the front of the planner. The only annoying thing about this cloth and paper planner is that it doesn't lay flat on its own. You'll see that once all the pages and things are in that it lays much flatter for me, but it doesn't necessarily lay flat at the beginning um, when I'm just getting everything in. But basically what I've done here is I've just put all the inserts back, like all the things that I wanted to use. So I've got some what she calls glass plastic. They're basically just clear tabs on the side. Those are from cloth and paper. And then here I'm putting a bow from the planner society on those task block tracker pages. And basically all I'm going to do now, I just thought I would keep the whole process on, um, on here to show you is I'm basically putting everything in this decorative front part. <laughs> and it takes me a while to kind of get things how I want them. So you'll kind of see the process. I'm going to put a lot of things in, take things out, move them around. And then once it gets set, it gets set. Look at that adorable like skeletal hand and this little um, paper clip that is a spider. Oh my gosh, the cutest, the cutest. Those come from Charming Planner Shop, I think it's called. And I, or Charming Planner Store, maybe. I will definitely link her shop below because some of her stuff is so cute. She doesn't have a ton of stuff in her store, but what she does have is super cute. And then the Hello Kitty bow came from 
honeybee shop. That haunted house came, I believe, from Tudu Papel. And I don't know if it's Toto or Tudu, but either way, <laughs> I will link it. Um, and some of these die cuts just came from a bunch of different shops on Etsy that I'll link for you down below. But let me talk about those task block tracker pages. So if you have the HB90 planner or if you've used the HB90 system, one of the things that we do in there is we track our time and plan out our projects and tasks according to task blocks. So this is basically the Pomodoro method of 30 minutes at a time. And so the idea is that you work in a focused manner for our, you know your your choice of time i do 25 minutes of work with a five minute break but it equals a 30 minute chunk so you could do 20 minutes with a 10 minute break or 15 minutes with a 15 minute break you could also break it up where you do 15 minutes with a five minute break and you do 20 minute blocks but i like to do 30 minute blocks and i call these task blocks and when we're planning what we want to do I, what we're able to do throughout the quarter, I recommend that you estimate how long a project will take based on how many 30 minute task blocks it will take you. So setting up this planner, let's say it took me an hour, that would be two task blocks. Well, in order to continue to plan correctly and really get an idea of where I'm spending my time, it's one thing to plan according to your estimate, but it takes it to a whole new level if you can actually track your projects throughout the quarter. And this takes, you know, it's not really for everybody. I don't think everybody would really benefit or be interested in the data of tracking your task blocks. So don't feel like you need to. Um, but I think that it's really helpful for people that enjoy like getting more detailed about their planning or really understanding where your time is going. So I took this page that goes in the, it's in the back of the HB90 planner and it's just a task block tracker. And I printed it out for all three of my goals. And then I put every single project I'm working on throughout the quarter into that little sh those sheets that went in the front of my planner and you'll get kind of another look at them. And I took every project and said, okay, let's say one of my projects is writing the disappearance of Vanessa Shaw. If that is going to take me, let's say 200 task blocks this quarter, then I went ahead and highlighted 200 task blocks. And as I go through each week, I will track my time and how much time I spent on that so that at the end of the quarter, I can see, did it actually take me 200 task blocks or did it take me less? So that has been a nice addition to my planner. I did that in Q3 for the first time for the entire quarter, and it was so helpful. So now that I have that front part of the decorative planner put together, now I'm just kind of adding some of the extra touches and seeing if I like it, which ones of these paper clips do I want to use. Uh, I've got these, you know, lots of different stickers and die cuts. And a lot of these spooky stickers, like I said, came from the Honey Bee Shop. I'm not sure if she still has these available, but they're so cute. That page or image that I just put in with all of the like fitness stuff and a picture of me, that is my vision board for this quarter and I actually made that vision board out of a bunch of different images in Canva and then put it as my phone wallpaper and then also printed it to put it in my planner I put some of those journaling cards in there and now I'm just kind of like seeing how do I want it to look when I actually open it up and like I said this is kind of a process and this is probably a more sort of cluttered look of the front of the planner but here I'm gonna do an actual walkthrough of everything that I have so look at this super cute sparkly spider there also is a dragonfly charm in there that she sent me from charming planner shop that I was like, I don't know if she knows who I am because I'm not using my Sarah Cannon name when I order, but the fact that she sent me a freebie that was a dragonfly is just, it's just, I don't know if it was a coincidence or if she did it on purpose, but it just meant so much to me. So I have this front dashboard that's all decorative. Then I have this thing called the inbox from Cloth and Paper. This is kind of a heavier piece of vellum or something like that, maybe plastic. And I tend to put some of my to-dos, like outstanding personal to-dos and other things. Then I also took some of the die cuts that I bought and printed them on um, vellum paper. I have my 
morning, afternoon, and evening routines marked in there. And then I've got different tabs. So this first one is my goals. It's got my yearly set. It's got my, I'm going to put my schedule in there. And here's those task block trackers where I have all my projects and how long I estimate they'll take. And by the end of the quarter, I'll have a good idea of how good I did on my estimates. Then the second part of the planner is my daily planning, or actually, no, this is the monthly plan here. And I have monthly inserts that I purchased from cloth and paper, and I have really enjoyed these, although I don't use that sort of dashboard page. So I'm not sure if I'm going to use those in 2023. Then I've got this uh, monthly or daily plan with this overlay from, like I said, Heather B, I think designs. And then this dashboard here that I love is from Glam Girl Planners. And then I just have more of those die cuts and stickers taped onto the back here with a journaling card from Simply Gilded. And then Impossible is Just an Opinion is one of the quote pages from my HB90 Q4 planner. And then I have my pages. These are my weekly and daily spreads from my HB90 planner, which if you haven't heard, is also now a digital planner. So we have a landscape planner in my Etsy shop now, but there is a portrait version coming and a dated version coming. So look out for those. In this next section, oh my gosh, if zombies chase us, I'm tripping you, None, nothing personal. I had to put that in there. <laughs> These bat inserts are from the digital dash box from Planner Press, and I'm not sure how I'm going to use those, but I have a few ideas. Uh, I'll keep you updated if you want to know. And then um, I have this beautiful vellum. This also came from a set of things that I bought on Etsy and then a dashboard from Planner Press. Then I have my Erin Condren compact vertical pages and these I will be decorating with those designs from Boulder Bond that I'll link down below for you. But I'm tracking my social media in this section and that's been helpful to have it all in one planner so I can talk about that when I do my 2023 planner lineup. Then I have that spider thing, and then I have the peace sign skeleton, and then this little uh, come fly away with me is just a freebie that came from one of the shops. And then I have some Erin Condren inserts that are kind of yearly, and then I have some Tom Tomo River paper that I punched and put in here for different ideas. So this is kind of my like idea parking lot that I keep up with throughout the month. And then this last section, I do sometimes have notes from different meetings that I've done. And then I also have a vision board for a TV series that I'm hoping to manifest at some point. And then just a back page to keep things from sliding onto the back of that um, planner. So this is a full look at my October planner setup. I have some clips that I didn't end up using that I might use in a different planner, but I just love how this turned out. I may add this extra charm here that I got from Charming Planner Store or Planner Shop, and um, that. but that's it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. Definitely let me know if you liked seeing this setup and don't forget to subscribe and I will see you in my next video for Preptober.